So we get the water coming outside the house, we have to have a thing called a vacuum breaker. Vacuum breaker looks like this. The water will come into the bottom of the vacuum breaker, which has double checks and a spring-loaded um, air inlet up here so that when this runs, a check valve shuts off and the water goes to our system and we don't have any leaks. Occasionally when you turn the sprinkler system on in the spring, a little water will spurt out of the top of your vacuum breaker. Usually you can just turn it off and turn it back on quickly so that the water pressure seals this spring-loaded, rubber-sealed check valve. If that works, all is good. If it doesn't, depending on the brand, this is a Febco, very popular here in Michigan, used all over. A uh, few companies make them, Watts makes them, Wilkins, I believe, makes a plastic one, which helps prevent the scrapping thieves from cutting this off the side of your house and cashing it in for money. The water comes out of the vacuum breaker, and it's going to go down in the ground to a valve box where it's going to go feed our sprinkling system. Now, this is required, uh, Boca Code, I believe, nationally. We came out of the house, we had a vacuum breaker. We came out of the vacuum breaker and we went down in the ground over to a location where we're going to put some valves in a plastic valve box. When we come into the valve box, we need to have a manifold so we can have electric valves operated by a timer going out to different areas of our house. Who knows where they're going to go, doesn't matter, we need them. So when we come out of the house, we come in this valve box, we need a way to get water to all these valves at once. So what we have is, it is called a manifold. Now in the old days, we made them out of PVC. I still do sometimes. I take and put two or three of these together. I'll put a threaded cap on the end so I can drain it if need be. And I can take, screw a valve on. See? But the valve won't swing on on this. Hence, this is the old way for doing this. This was not bad, but I could get my three valves in a row. I could glue it together, but if I wanted to change a valve, I was kind of out of luck. I'm going to show you. This is an old glue manifold. It's just fine, but you can see the white PVC. Here's the line coming in from my store. This solenoid we have disabled. And we are simply using these two solenoids for zone one and zone two. So the new system we have, we have these T's with O-ring seals in them that we screw together. And we have valves that are pipe in, pipe out. One inch pipe is the standard size for a valve. It's one inch threaded pipe, national pipe thread. I can screw PVC, copper, anything I want in there. The new way is to put these on. So I can put this on and screw on my valve and if I need to repair this valve or change it at a later date, I can just take and undo the nut and I don't have to spin the valve. I can undo the nut, pull it up, I take a torch, I heat up the rubber tube a little bit, I pull the valve out, I can replace it, put the new one in, bingo. And by seeing as how I have a union, it's sweet. At the very end I put a 90. And so now I have a, a three valve manifold, slick, easy to repair. Usually I have one inch copper or one inch PVC feeding my three valves and now I can take my one inch semi-rigid poly line and then go out and away I go out in the yard to go feed my different heads, my different zones that I want to supply. That's a couple ways to do a manifold, plenty of ways to do it, but this is just one way we like this. This is sweet. We love this one because it's so easy to build, unbuild, and add to. If we need to add another zone, we can just keep going along. We don't have to take and wreck the old existing system in order to do this. Here's a zone valve. Typical. Requires 24 volts. When this gets 24 volts, this valve opens up, water flows. Take away the electricity, it shuts off. Sprinkler box out here in the lawn needs to get powered somehow. What was done was they tunneled underneath the sidewalk to here. This is the wire that is an ad conductor, like seven conductor wire, and it runs all the way down. So this line comes all the way down to where the water originates from the store. Here's the vacuum breaker. But I'm at my buddy's house. He's not home. I can't turn on the system because his timer is in the garage. So I go out in the yard. I find the valve box. 
Here's a small one. I don't have a big, big valve box to show you. Here's a single. This would be in the ground, flush with the ground. All you'd see with the lid. I pop the lid off and I look inside and I see the valve. I can reach down in the valve box. The, a multiple valve box would be square, would be larger. I know the water's on, so I can take and rotate. This is the solenoid. This is the electric valve. This is the electric part that turns electricity into opening the valve. I can usually turn this on one turn and the zone will turn on. So we can en energize these valves just by turning these solenoids one revolution. So we're going to turn this on and we're going to give you a clue show you how this baby goes. So now we'll look down the road here. You can see the gear heads come on. And or you see this little bleed nipple here? This little nipple here, you undo this. Just a turn or two. Water will drip out of here. That will also fire the zone. So I don't need anybody to be home to fire a zone on the sprinkler system. I can go out and find the valve box. I can turn a few of these on. Try not to lose that little screw there. They're hard to come by.